All right, so this video is going to cover a, a few different things. Um, we're going to run over Ledger setup with a SegWit address. We're going to go over padding uh, inscriptions uh, that you want to send that are potentially low on sats. And lastly, we're going to go over verification using Metrica. So first thing you want to do is open your Sparrow wallet, go File, New Wallet. And we're just going to call this one Ledger Test. Brilliant. So once you've logged in or you get to this screen here, we want to make sure we've got native SegWit. Now, the reason why we're using SegWit is because we can actually sign uh, to verify our assets uh, with Metrica this way as well. So not only will it be safe because we're using a ledger, but we'll also be able to verify that we hold these assets in our ledger. Uh, so the other thing I will mention is that uh, Taproot addresses and SegWit addresses can both receive uh, ordinals and inscriptions. That's completely fine. They're just UTXOs. The, the problem then comes into if you're creating your own uh, ordinals, you need a taproot address. So SegWit is, is fine for storing, taproot's fine for storing, so you can use either of those. But SegWit will be the one you need to use if you're planning to use a signature to verify your assets. Clicking on connect to hardware wallet scan, I've already got it plugged in and unlocked. And then what we want to do is... This is important as well. We want to import a key store. Now, let, let's avoid the first few because if you've already used your SegWit address on your ledger, there might already be Bitcoin or something stored there. So we don't want to confuse anything. We're going to go all the way down to five. And you'll notice right away that that says five there. And that's what we want to see. So we'd go ahead and apply that. And that will set up that wallet there. I've actually already set it up before. So I'm just going to load that up now. All right, so you can see that I've already got a few uh, UTXOs that are in my ledger under the SegWit address. I've called it SegWit Ordinals just for easy uh, keeping. Um, the other thing I will do is I'm actually going to open another wallet which is uh, has been imported from previously. It was stored in my hero, so I've imported that wallet there. And that's because I'm going to show you how to send it from a taproot address and also pad those. All right, so now I've got my taproot address here as well. So. There's two different ways um, that you can go away, uh, go around sending assets to your SegWit address, which is linked to your ledger. The easiest and, and I suppose the best one is if it's stored on Hero, Expert, Unisat Wallet, whatever, you can just copy your address and say send it straight across and then it will appear as a UTXO here. Now, being that wallets like Expert and Hero manage the, uh, the fees and it doesn't come off the inscription, I believe, you don't need to worry about you know, how many sats are actually in the UT UTXOs on Xverse and Hero. So if your assets in, in Xverse and Hero and you want to put them onto a ledger, um, you follow the first set steps, set up the SegWit uh, account attached to your ledger, and then go to receive and send them across and they'll be here. I'll show you how to do the verification part a little later on. But first, we're going to imagine that I have my taproot address and you can see all my uh, UTXOs here. Um, and a little bit of a reminder that UTXOs is, is, you know, it's a combination of, uh, it could be multiple different ranges of sats inside this one UTXO. But you can see that my lowest has 1,491 sats and my highest has 35,000 sats. And I actually sent this, uh, these sats to myself to use for padding inscriptions. So this isn't actually, this UTXO isn't actually an inscription. Um, one thing that good housekeeping is you should have all these frozen as well because as soon as they're frozen, you can't send them. You can't send any of these. And the thing to bear in mind is that if you go to make a transaction and say you haven't actually haven't frozen some of these, you might end up sending uh, one of your inscriptions by accident. So always play it safe and freeze everything straight away. So there's two different paths that you can take. Um, let's say I want to send this one across to my SegWit address. I can then just go receive and actually I'm just going to copy this address to have more than the same one. You can go to receive or you can just send it and then you hit a little send arrow or send selected. Paste in that address and we're just going to go ordinal. And straight away it makes it quite clear what's going to happen from here. So the rate is 16 sats per V-byte. It's high priority and you can see Input. So what's going? My UTXO is I'm spending 10,000 sats because as we saw here, it's 10,000. And then the transaction process is this address, the BC1Q address, which is our SegWit address because it has Q, not P, it will receive 8,416 sats. 
Now, your inscription is on the very first sat, typically, or it should be, sorry. Um, so you don't need to worry about spending that. It's only if this fee, you know, it was, you know, it's 1500 So if we look at sending this with 1500 we would actually be able to send it and we'll need to pad it. So fortunately, there's enough that, you know, if I was to send this to my segue, the UTXO still has 8,416 sats in it. So I really don't mind. So I'm actually just going to send that and it's going to take a little bit off my uh, UTXO, but hey, that's fine. So in a minute, we'll, uh, we'll see that appear. And I think we, we just did anyway. Um, brilliant. So unconfirmed. Um, you can see that one's coming through there as well. So what we'll do is now I suppose the, the fun part is padding the sat so it has extra sats attached to that inscription. And I will mention back to my SegWit address as well that this is your uh, UTXO to your output. Um, you can right click and go copy transaction output and you can paste that into ordinals.com and then you'll be able to see uh, the actual inscription. It should show up as the, the, the very first thing as well. But the thing is, it, it won't until it's confirmed actually show up because they, this that UTXO hasn't actually been confirmed in the blockchain. All right, so now back to if we want to look at padding or adding. So what I'm going to do is unfreeze this one and we're going to unfreeze this one. Now I've labeled that because I know it's my sats for sending. So if you do send some Bitcoin to your address, which I sent some Bitcoin to this address, I've got 35,000 sats left. Make sure you label it. It'll keep some housekeeping as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those that I want to send. Send selected. And then what we want to do is I'm just going to paste in the address where I'm sending it back to my SegWit address, copy address. Paste in the top here, and we're just going to call this uh, padded ordinal. So you notice when I was typing, look at this kind of go a little bit crazy down here. It all changes. So that's something you definitely need to keep an eye on. And what we want to do is we can see that the ordinal, because I've labeled it before, and the sats for sending are two different there. So what we'll do is ordinal small padding. Let's actually change that label to make it a little bit clearer again. So let's go needs ordinal. I'm going to call it a hungry ordinal because it needs more sats. And then we'll go back. So what you can see here is that your transaction is going to work in a first in, first out. So what the, our aim is we want to make sure the inscription, which is at the start of the hungry ordinal, is at the top because it needs to be sent out first. So it's the first going in as well, first out, first in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you saw it go crazy before, so I'm just going to keep on trying. Brilliant. So I just started randomly typing. You can do it the same with the fee as well. And now what we have is the hungry ordinal is going to be the first one out, which means it will be at the top here sending to my SegWit address. But the other thing to bear in mind is I really don't want this to be padded with 34,000 sats in total. So 34,977 would be the padding and then there's one that's the actual ordinal itself. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I actually want this padded ordinal to be 10,000. And that's kind of keeping it the same as what some of the others are as well. And then what I want to do is the remaining amount, I'm actually going to send it back to myself at the same address. Back to there. And then what I'm going to do is just select the max so it's the rest of it there. So... I hope you've noticed again that this order's changed. What has gone on? So we're just going to keep on playing around. Brilliant. And once again, you need to make sure that all these don't change as well. Now, we want to make sure this is left over. Brilliant. So one thing I will mention is that this is the first check. The next screen you need to check again. Now, these, these three here, will act, or these two, sorry, will actually change on the next screen again. But let's go over it. So my Hungry Ordinal, first in, means it's the first out as well. But we can see that the Hungry Ordinal should start at the top and it's got 9,999 sats that are padded to it. And the leftover, it's actually going back to the same wallet that I'm in right now. So let's create the transaction. And we see Hungry Ordinal, brilliant. 
That's the one we want. And then the padded, so 10,000 at the top and left over there. The other thing that people uh, will do as well, and I think it's actually really good practice, is actually label them one and two. So for, for this sake, what we'll do is we'll actually do that um, ourselves. So we know the order that they need to be is this order here. So if you go to create the transaction, you'll see, hey, it's still actually in the right order and hungry ordinals first as well. So this looks like a perfect transaction. Um, what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and we'll go ahead and sign that and make sure it's all good. I just want to check my fees as well. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, see how it's changed if I was to send that. If I was to send that, what would have happened is it actually would have put the inscription at the start and sent it back to myself. Um, so let's try again. Brilliant, hungry ordinal. Yep, one, two. Now, I'm pretty sure these don't actually change on this screen here, but they do on the first one, so double check that. Um, but just be certain, double check everything when you sending especially important things as well all right let's sign and broadcast so that should be in the mempool waiting for confirmation and we should be able to go to our segwit and we'll see that there is a, a ordinal there with 10,000 sats padded to a utxo that has 10,000 sats and so we've padded that back up cool now here comes the third part of the video which is talking about metric of verification so what you want to do is log into your account on Metrica um, and go add wallet. From there, select Bitcoin wallet, other Bitcoin wallets, and you need to copy your address wherever it's held. Paste that in, continue. You now get a message which you can click this button to copy. Quickest way to sign messages is right click, sign verify. Paste the message in here. And you want to make sure it's standard Electrum setup. Shout out to the team at Metrica as well. Um, we've been partnering with them and uh, their response time and commitment to actually making this work has been uh, amazing. So shout out. And then what we want to do is click enter my ledger, hit sign message. It's going on my ledger. We're going to approve. And then there's another one. Okay, click verify to double check. Yeah, that's all good. And then we copy this message, go back to Metrica, continue and then paste the sign message and continue. Now all going well, I should see an updated and my wallet is now verified. So you should have the updated Discord roles if you are using this for verification as well. So I hope that's covered pretty much everything you need to know about uh, verification, padding sats, and also using a SegWit address with Ledger as well. So now you've got a place that you can keep all your assets safe and also verify the holding, uh, which is really cool. I hope this has helped everyone. Thank you.